But we cross now to Mauritius, where Sachin Sangvi, Managing Director of Regrow, is standing by. Sachin, it's interesting looking at your background. You're a, you're a British educator or UK educated specialist in stem cells and an entrepreneur as well. Did the entrepreneur side come after you gained the knowledge in stem cells? Uh, I think uh, when I finished my education uh, and research uh, skills uh, gathering, that's when I thought that I could set up a, a world-class uh, GMP facility in India uh, to cater to the stem cell uh, market, which wasn't uh, addressed by any of the big uh, pharmaceutical or the MNCs. So that's when we saw the opportunity, uh, and I, I think it went hand in hand uh, along with the skill of uh, stem cell uh, research. Uh, I also uh, had developed those skills for setting up a business uh, venture as well. Now you must have been asked this question a thousand times. Remember, we we're a business channel, so and not a scientific channel. So stem cells are not always fully understood by the audience that we are talking to. Could you give us, uh, in layman's terms, what it actually, uh, what it means? Uh, stem cells are uh, uh, cells that are present in every uh, individual's body. Uh, their function is to basically uh, repair and maintain all the tissue and the organs uh, uh, that are present. Uh, they, however, are also found in various parts of the human body, uh, such as the umbilical cord blood at childbirth, uh, the bone marrow, uh, also the peripheral blood, and uh, now research has also shown that dental pulp has uh, stem cells. So where's the business case with stem cells? So uh, how, how stem cell therapy works is uh, uh, there are two parts to it. One is an autologous cell therapy and the other is the allogenic uh, cell therapy. Uh, for autologous cell therapy, uh, a patient who has an injury or a defect in his uh, uh, bone or any kind of a limb, uh, he would ideally go to the hospital and uh, uh, see the doctor. That's when they would advise on the stem cell uh, therapy and have a step one as uh, isolation of the stem cell, which is then sent back to the laboratory for culture and manipulation of these cells. Uh, once uh, this process is over, which typically takes around three to four weeks, they're sent back to the same hospital for re-implantation in, uh, in the same patient uh, to treat that condition, whether it's acute or chronic. Hmm. And w what about Mauritius? Because it is a developing field, the whole biotechnology field, but specifically in stem cells. What are you guys doing in that country? Uh, Actually, here for the BioAfrica Summit, and uh, we've discussed with uh, the government officials. Uh, I think they have also passed a clinical trial act recently, a couple of years back, and uh, they seem to be opening up on the biotech sector. And uh, I think that's when, uh, if 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 they take an early decision on stem cell uh, application, basic science or advanced or even uh, practice in the medical hospital. Uh, it will be an advantage to not just the Mauritian uh, population, but also to the African countries. So we're working closely with them to develop a, a state-of-the-art uh, laboratory, which can help from right from basic till at the advanced uh, level. Mauritius is doing some interesting things in many, many areas. Is its research, or is what the government is putting on the table for stem cell research amongst the best in the world? Is it a, advanced or ahead of other countries? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's uh, very advanced, but I think uh, they're doing the right things and uh, uh, getting the right uh, people uh, to advise them on certain regulations and uh, to g prepare the legal framework. So uh, I think if they do that uh, very quickly in the next couple of years, you can see uh, Mauritius as one of the key area where uh, Africa can then uh, uh, look to Mauritius for setting up those uh, few guidelines in the future. Uh, you mentioned Africa. So from an African context, it uh, would appear that Mauritius is ahead of that curve. Yeah, definitely. I think the government is more active and uh, there are a lot of uh, research institutes involved uh, doing uh, uh, advanced clinical trials as well as uh, basic research. Uh, I think with more and more facilities uh, being available, I think that can be the way forward.
Sachin, just from a broader perspective, stem cell research around the world has been painted as rather controversial. Are you seeing greater acceptance of the science? Uh, yes, I think uh, if you if you see uh, that uh, there are more than three thousand clinical trials that are underway uh, currently in the world, and uh, more than eight hundred or thousand laboratories dedicated only in stem cells, trying to advance their research to uh, medical use into the hospitals, and uh, I think uh, it's that probably the uh, the failures have been highlighted more than the success stories. Uh, that's one of the reasons probably uh, it's termed as controversial, but uh, there are uh, some really good institutes working and uh, uh, doing a lot of uh, advanced research. And uh, US has seen that, Europe has seen that, uh, Asia, Korea and uh, Japan has seen that. And now in India, uh, we as Regrow have uh, been able to provide two of the uh, cellular therapies uh, at the market level. Are you also finding that with the advances on big data, that it's helping your research, it's helping the science to develop perhaps more rapidly? Yes, I think uh, a, a lot of data is being uh, published and there are a lot of more and more hospitals that are trying to set up stem cell laboratories and uh, stem cell transplantation centers, uh, which will uh, further aid in the progression of this uh, science from uh, mainly known for research into practice. So I think the translation part is uh, happening, but it's happening maybe a little slow. That was Sachin Sangvi talking to us from Mauritius. He's the MD of Regrow.